Hi everyone and welcome to another video that I'll be sharing with you here on my YouTube channel. If this is the first time you've seen one of my videos, I am Nikki and I'm known as Nikki Craft around the social media and crafting world. So today I'm going to be sharing with you some hints and tips on how to shape your flowers. So in the previous other two videos that I did um, do, I shared with you some colouring techniques. So one of the first ones that I shared with you was using your Distress Pencils and also your Distress Oxide Inks to colour them, which was a really neat, easy and quick way of colouring your flowers. And then in the second one, I used the Derwent Ink Tense Pencils, which kind of, um, I, in my opinion anyway, um, creates just a little bit more texture, a little bit more detail in those flowers. A little bit more time intense, but I definitely think it's worth it, especially because the Inktense pencils are water soluble. And when they're water soluble, that means that when they, um, when once you've applied the water to them to activate them, and they dry, they actually dry permanent, which means that when we go to flower shape them, whether or not you're using your foam mat and your flower shaping tool, or whether or not you're using your flower shaping moulds, we're going to spritz them with, with water. So that means that when we're using the intense pencils, because they are permanent when they're dry, that means that you're not going to lose any of that detail. So what I'm going to do today is we will show you two different ways of shaping those flowers. Today we are using the clematis flowers from the Climbing Clematis range from Heartfelt Creations. But of course you can use any flowers because at the end of the day, you know, any stamps, any dyes that you are going to be able to um, stamp and die cut your flowers out, you can use the same technique to create your three dimensional flowers. So the first one we'll do is we'll go straight into using the flower shaping mold. Okay, so let me just move some of my bits out of the way here and make some space. So I'll bring the mold in. Now, if you are not familiar with the Heartfelt Creations mold, they come in two parts. As you can see, very, very um, deep in design, which means you're going to get a lot of depth in those flower shaping. The thing with the flower shaping molds is it's really nice, easy and quick which means that if you do create a lot of flowers, if you're somebody like me that used, likes to put a lot of flowers on your projects that you create, it is really kind of saves so much time. So what I'm going to do with these ones, let's have a look. So we'll put these ones to one side. They're the ones that we'll create using just the flower shaping tool. What we'll do is we'll put a mixture of some of them that I've made using the Distress Pencils and Distress Oxides. And then I will add some of the ones that I've coloured in using the Distress Pencils. And the really good thing about the moulds is you can put more than one layer on them. So what I'm going to do is, let's just put the leaves in there, if you can just see the leaves. So I'm putting them all um, stamped image face down into the mould and they are just going to sit in there really nicely. So we've got a couple of leaves in there. I'm going to give that a spritz of water. So you can put more than one layer in, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the ones that I've add, used the Intense Pencils with. Although having said that, I used the Intense Pencils on the stamped image side, but then I, just for quickness, I actually used the Distress Oxides on the back. Okay, just to familiarise you with that, just in case you didn't watch the videos on the colouring. So then we're going to give that another spritz so that all of those are spritzed with your water. And then we're going to take that second layer of that mould Okay. And then you'll notice there's feet, so you've got three feet on there in the corners, and then that is just going to sit on there. 
And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my plates in. So I'm using the Jane Davenport by Spellbinders, which is a, an A5 die cutting machine. As you can see, my mats are well used. And then we're going to pop that mould and sandwich those in between. Now, before I put the second um, plate on there, I'm actually going to put a shim on. So that's basically just a couple of sheets of paper that I've got there. And then I'm going to pop that through my machine. So you will notice that I am not using that large thick plate. Okay, so not all machines will take your flower shaping molds. So I've kind of realized the rule of thumb is if your um, die cutting machine takes one of those thick plates, it will take your mold because basically the mold is kind of replacing that thick plate that comes with your machines. So I'm just going to go over and I'm just going to pop that through my machine. So the A5 machine, they will fit through. You just need to make sure that you've got that sandwich properly and the plates are straight. And I'm going to take that through once and then I'm going to literally bring that back. I know I'm not actually showing this on the camera, but I will bring that across there. So I've taken it through and then I brought it back. Okay, so then I'm going to take that top plate off and there you have the flowers that are now basically ready for molding and actually putting your stamens in really nice, easy and quick. So this is the, one of the flowers that I've coloured with the, um, let me think, yeah, this one is done with the Derwent Intense Pencils, okay? And this one on the top here is as well. So just gently prise that apart. They should kind of fall off quite easily. But if you've kind of put a little bit too much water on, you're just going to want to wait until that slightly dries before you prise them apart. And there you go, another one with the intense pencils. And I think we have another one here as well. So just prise that apart. And there, that one again. I mean, just look at the detail in that. Really nice and easy and quick. And then these two are the ones that I did with the distress oxide and then I went down the centers with the distress pencils okay and then we've got the smaller ones here which I can't actually remember I think actually these ones were done with the distress pencils and the oxides okay so you've actually got your three sizes in here which actually coordinates with the climbing clematis collection there you have your leaves Okay, so really pretty easy and quick. But having said that, we haven't finished because obviously we're going to want to glue those together to create that three-dimensional clematis. Okay, so before we do that, we'll come in and I will show you how to create your dimension and that um, detail in those clematis by hand. Okay, so if you don't have your moulds, this is how you're going to want to do it. So you're going to want to put image face down on these ones. These are the ones that I've coloured in using my Derwent Intense pencils. And I've kind of used like a, a purpley colour and then I've gone in with a nice green as well, just to add a little bit, bit more detail. So with this one... The first one, what we'll do is, we'll do it in two different kind of techniques. So with this one, I'm going to use my Heartfelt Creations flower shaping tool. If you're not familiar with that, that um, the actual pack comes in 13 pieces. So you're getting 13 parts of the flower shaping kit, which comes with, let me just move that out of the way. So you're going to get your flower shaping tool there and then you're going to get all your tips as well so the tips fit in here okay so you've got 10 different tips you've got your flower shaping mat 
and you've also got a thicker density mat as well in there as well so you can use that one for your flower shaping or you can use it as a pricking tool you've got all different sizes in there and the really nice thing about this is that it's magnetic okay so you're going to just pop those tips in there and they are really easy interchangeable because as you can see you are just going to pop them in there so I'm going to use this one and this one's actually got the quilling tool on the end it's sort of like a what we call a um, paper curler okay so it's slightly so if you see the um, slit in there on a quilling tool that's actually a little bit closer together with this one it means that you can actually use slightly thicker card or paper so that you can use it for all your flower shaping so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in with one of the smaller tips. It does actually tell you on the back here the sizes of the tips. And I think I've actually gone for the two mil. OK, so what I'm going to do with this one, I'm going to go down the centre of each of my petals, turning as I go around. OK, so just coming down, putting a little bit of pressure on but not too much. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in again and just add a little bit more detail going in again with that smaller tip, just around the edges, just not all the way around the edges. I always think that it's kind of makes it a little bit more realistic if you just hit parts of that petal. Okay, just around the edge of each one of those petals. Then we're going to turn that over like so. And I'm going to change that tip for a, what we'll do is we'll change the curling one. So I'm going to change that to one of the bigger ones, which I think is about an eight mil. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to dome that in the center. So that's going to lift those petals up. And then I'm going to take it in my hands and then I'm just going to squeeze the tips like so. If you want to, you can use a pair of tweezers for this. And then that's going to give it a bit of more of a pointy detail. OK, so when you're creating your clematis, I'm actually going to do them as clematis, but you can make other flowers with them as well. So you can layer them up in different colours. You can layer them up in smaller ones on the top, going radiating down to the smaller. So you could add three sizes to that. But that would be my first layer of my clematis. Can you see the detail in there? So not quite as much detail as we're getting with the flower mold, but you've still got quite a bit of detail in there. Okay, so then we'll go back in with this one. Now this one's actually dried a little bit, so I will just spritz that with water again, just a light spritz. It's just a bottle of water that I've got, which is a really nice fine mist on it. And I'm going to use for this one, I'm going to use the Dress My Craft, what I call a golf tool, okay? So with this one, I'm going to go in and just bring that down the center of each one of my petals. If you see, it's got like, I think there's three grooves in there. Okay, so that's going to be where you're going to get the detail for your flower. And we're just going to go down each one of those petals. Then I will go in with that larger tip on my flower shaping tool turn the clematis flower petals over go in the center and again just cut that so that lifts up and again just go in and just squeeze the tips of those petals into a slight point okay so go in again and just do that and then with that one, you have got a little bit more detail because you've got the grooves in that golf tool. OK, so if you can see there. The detail in that one compared to that one. OK, slightly different, but two easy techniques there to be able to 
make your clematis flowers. So let's just recap. So let's bring the ones back that we did in the flower shaping mold. And we're going to do that in exactly the same way. We're going to go in with each one of those petals and just cut that. Okay, so that one, we'll do this one. And we will do this one. Now the smaller ones, we can cut that with a slightly smaller tip on our flower shaping tool. I think this is probably about the, I think this is probably about the three mil. And we'll just cut that one. And we will cut that one as well. So I'm going to use two layers of petals for each one of my flowers. Okay, so we'll just bring that one in as well. I might as well do that one there whilst I've got it. And again, if you want to, you can pinch the tips of those flowers so that they go into a little bit more of a point. I think actually that does actually make all the difference. Okay. So just pinch each one of those petals. I think we'll put that one with that one. That one's going to go with that one. And then we'll come in with this one. So these are the ones that I coloured with the Dermot Intense pencils. And just squeeze each one of those just at the point there. They're all going to look slightly different, which makes it a lot more realistic. And then we need to put those together. So to put them together, you can either use a heat gun or you can use some wet glue. Obviously your wet glue will take a little bit longer to um, sort of dry. So with this one, I tend to use my heat gun just go in there with a little bit of glue and pop that in there. So that one sits on the top and I'm going to go in with my flower shaping tool again and just cut that a little bit. Okay, so as you notice with this one, I haven't colored the center because I will be filling in the center in a second. So then we'll come back with this one. So this one was done in the flower shaping mold. Again, using my glue gun, just to add a little bit of glue. To kind of just going around it a little bit to spread that glue around so I'm not getting too much of a bulk of glue in there. And then again, go in with that larger tip and just cup that flower. Okay, so with this one, I have actually coloured in the centre. Then we'll do exactly the same with this one. Just add some glue. Don't need too much, but as I say, it is worth spreading that around with the tip of your hot glue gun, just so that you don't get a bulky part bit of glue in there. So we'll just cup that again. Okay, so you kind of get sort of like a little bit of a different variation. I think definitely it's worth going for and using the intense pencils if you want to go for more than one colour. So I've used, I think it was two different shades of purple here and then I've added that green. So once that had dried, I actually layered that green on there to give that kind of colour. So it's definitely worth using sort of like your pencils if you want a little bit more of a contrast in colour. But they still look very pretty, whichever you colour them in. Okay, so what I'll do is I'm going to put those smaller flowers, I'll make those at a later date. Right, so let's put some centres in. So there's so many different ways you can put your centres in. You can use your pearls, you can use little tiny seed beads, you can use some little paper um, sort of like bits here. So what I'll do with this one, when I say paper bits, right, so what I did was, I was actually going through my heartfelt dyes the other week and I've got a bag of oddments, okay? So they're bits that have come out of my packets and I'm not really sure what they are or what they go to. And I came across this and I thought, right, okay, that's obviously a center to a flower of some kind. Not really sure which one. It could be the Ariana Blooms, I'm kind of guessing. But anyway, that kind of, when you die cut that out, is like a bit of a pinwheel. 
Okay, so I kind of got me thinking, right? So if I make lots of them, so I've got lots of them here. I haven't glued them together. I think I've got one, two, three, four, five. So what I've done is I've gone in with a small tip just to cup them up like that on each one of those. And then using my wet glue on this one, because there's gonna be quite a few layers, just add a little bit of glue and then add them to each of the centers, sort of alternating those um, sort of like spine, spindly kind of bits here. Okay, spindly bits, not really sure what you call them, but yeah, I'm gonna call them spindly bits. You're probably watching this and having a bit of a laugh because I do make words up. So then I'm going to go in with that one as well and just pop that in. Now it all depends on how you want yours to look. Could leave it like that or could put one more in. I'm going to go for another one because I've got them there already. And then just pop that in there. And then what I've done is I've made a center oops, out of paper. So with this one, what I've done is, can you see what I've done there? I kind of quilled a center. So what I did was I started off with a strip of paper. I've colored it up with some ink, which I think I used the, this one here. It just lightly colored it up. It doesn't have to be even. I wanted actually some white to actually show through. So that didn't matter. So just add a little bit of color and then I'm going to go in with my scissors and just snip, not all the way, all the way along there. Some of you may have a die that makes this and you're just going to go all the way along until you feel that you've got enough, like that. Okay, and then you're gonna want to, you can either use your quilling tool and hang on a minute, let's just do a little bit more so you can see. Just, I think that'll do. So we'll cut that there. So you can go in with your quilling tool and quill that around like that. So you're going to go in, put that in the center of that and just quill it around, which makes it really nice and easy like that. Or you can do what I did and did mine by hand and actually added some glue to mine. So what I did was I took that so that it didn't come apart. I just added some glue all the way down that strip, just down the bottom. And then I just curled that. Well, I actually went in with the um, quilling tool first, the curler, and then just went in and just rolled that all the way around like that until I was happy with it. Let's just put that one over there, like that. And then what I did, I just kind of pulled that, whoops, it's not alive, hang on. Just pull that over out like that. And then you have a center, okay? So bring that back there that we, I just made with the like pinwheel type thing going to add some glue to that little bit that I've just curled and I'm using my hot glue gum and then just go in and just pop that in the center make sure it is in the center like that you are going to once that's set and it's in place you are going to want to open that up a little bit more there you have a really pretty centre. And I actually think that looks really realistic when you think of what a clematis centre looks like. And when the clematis actually die off, the petals drop off and you are actually left with loads of these on a clematis plant. Okay, so they are actually really pretty. So what I'm going to do is just take that centre and I'm going to add a little bit of glue 
and pop that in the center of that clematis that I've made. And look at that, how gorgeous is that? I actually really like that one. Really do like that one. Okay, so that's one of them. And then another way of doing it is using your stamens. I've made used a mixture here of some pearl stamens. I've used some, I think these are iCraft, the green ones. Well, they weren't green, I think they were white. And then I've added some ink to them. And then the purple ones are some Heartfelt Creations ones. I've wired them together and then put them in the center of my flower. So what I'm going to do is use my Dress My Craft tool, make a hole. And the nice thing about this is it graduates in size. So you can go from a really thin hole to quite a thick hole there. And then we're going to pop that through like that. Maybe I should have made that hole a little bit bigger. Let me just make that hole slightly bigger there. So just take that down a little bit further and then straighten that wire, pop that in there and then just pull that up. And there you have a clematis made with your stamens in the middle okay and the thing is with that one that is on wire if you wanted to add a wire to this you can as well we'll show you in another video as i say i will be making quite a few flower videos over the next months or years i can keep going to be honest with um, the flower shaping videos but i just wanted to kind of give you a starting point for those of you that are new to heartfelt and new to crafting maybe new to flower shaping you've never made a flower before and you're kind of seeing them around your social media and thinking i want to have a go as i say they don't have to be heartfelt creations they can be any flower dies or stamps and dies that match and coordinate together so that you can make absolutely gorgeous flowers like this. So this was another one that I did. So this one was done by hand, okay, using your stamens in the center. And these are the ones I've just done. So you can cup them up to make sort of like, if you look at some of these that I've done, okay, so I've used that one. So that one's, I've done some different layers, sizes. So I've used all three layers of that clematis flower. So I've gone from the large to the medium to the small in the center. Cut that one quite up, quite tight. And then these ones kind of just kept them quite open. If you want to, you can just lay them a little bit more flat if you want it to look a little bit more kind of realistic to the clematis flower. It's completely up to you how you do it, but it's all in the shaping. It's all in the colouring. It's all in the shaping. I mean, just look at the centre of that one. I just think that looks so realistic. I'm really, really pleased with that. I'm definitely going to be making some more of those. So anyway, thank you for joining me. And if you liked this video and you enjoyed watching it, please do like and subscribe because I will be adding lots more videos. As I say, this is just the third one in many of the series in my flower shaping and flower making videos that I will be adding to my YouTube channel. I don't just do flowers, I make three-dimensional projects, I make journal albums, I do scrapbooking, I do card making. I don't actually think there's anything in papercraft that I do not do. There's not a particular niche that I can say, this is what I do, this is what I'm going to concentrate on, because I do a bit of everything. And that's because I am so passionate and I absolutely love papercraft. Anything papercraft you will see me do. So thank you for joining me and I'll be back again soon. Thanks very much. Bye.